Hi, Amy. Uh, it's, it's Warwick here. Um, I just want to say, uh, sorry about what happened to the pie the other night. Um, I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, give us a call back sometime. Thanks. Bye. Bloody hell. It's like looting. No, we feel it's a very fair reflection of what Sue is owed, given your years together and the sacrifices she's made. What sacrifices? Well, she gave up her career to help you work on yours. Well, she didn't do a very good job if she did, because this career's at rock bottom. Don't say that. What career did you give up? I wanted to be a nurse. Oh, come on. Do we really need any more nurses? Really? And you're not cut out for that sort of work. I am. But you didn't want me to do it because you thought it would be bad for your image. Well, it would have been. You can't have an international film star with a wife who spends her days emptying bedpans, can you? You don't see Brad Pitt with a wife who's a nurse. Oh, hiya, Brad. How's it going? Well, fine, thanks. I just won an Oscar. How's Angelina? Oh, she's great. Yeah, she's just sticking a big pill up an old man's ass at the moment. Thanks for asking. It's ridiculous. Well, whatever your feelings, we'll give you 48 hours to consider our offer or we shall have to take you to court. <laughs> Your face! <laughs> oh, sorry. <sighs> it's a little bit awkward, this. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm getting a bit desperate. Um, I wonder if you could... Maybe give me, say, five grand just to live on. Uh, it, treat it like a charity donation. But you're not a charity work, are you? It's good as. Uh, got no work, no money. So, uh, you know, I'm a charity case, really. I, I know you do loads for charity, so just, just treat me as one. I do do a lot for charity. Um, I've raised millions this year already. Steve, on the other hand, doesn't do anything ever, so he could probably give you let five grand. Let me tell grand. you the problem there, though. Let yeah. me tell you the problem there straight away. I've got a blanket rule about never giving money to anyone, um, to anyone, yeah. friends, family, loved ones, loved ones. So, do you know what I mean, anyone I've ever encountered, so yeah. I give too much away, too generous. Generous. I'm too generous, he's not generous to his little skin flint, Nothing. and you're not going to get anything out of him, so there's nothing we can do really, Warwick. Right. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do then. Oh, Warwick, come on, you can't go around begging for money, you're, you're an actor and a businessman. I know, it's just, there's just no work. I mean, the, ph the phone has stopped ringing. I bet your phone's always ringing. Yeah, and I hate it, because you do someone I don't want to hear from ask me to do something I don't want to do. I've got to do a thing for Sting next week, hosting a charity auction, because he calls, and I can't say no, because it's for charity. You know, just because he wants to save the world, we've all got to. I know he's going to be his fucking loot. He's never without it these days, is he? Always okay. with his loot. I know. I had a party last year, I invited him. OK. And I said to the cloakroom staff, if he brings his loot, take it off him. Say, you've got to have it. So he came with it, because they took it off him. He was a little bit crestfallen. And we were sitting round, and he was fidgety. And after about half an hour, out of his top pocket, he'd smuggled in some pan pipes. <laughs> so he played those, so I couldn't win. So be grateful the phone isn't ringing, because it might be Sting. Oh, I'd love to meet Sting. Right. Is there a way you could get me an invite to that event? Yeah. I'll... Get someone to get in contact with you. When did you have a party? I knew you were going to say that. You were away. Where was I? You were down in Bristol. Um, you had that sore throat, so you went home to your mum for a whole week to let it was her more than a sore It was way more yeah. than a sore throat. It was right. a proper major sort of tonsillitis attack. It was like yeah, barbed wire. Yeah. You couldn't have possibly have come to a party. Nasty. Well, it would have been... it'd be nice to have the, the invitation. You would let you go, not with that sort of... It would be nice to have the invitation and then yeah. drop you a line saying, sorry, I can't make no. it, mate. Days admin. What's that letter you've got there, Cheryl? There's a letter here from the offices of Sting. Oh, wow. From the offices of Sting. Please read it. Out loud. 
Dear Warwick, as you may know, I'm an ambassador for the Global Child Institute, the anti-poverty charity that works with the world's poorest young people. Mm, I was not aware of that, Sting. Thanks for telling me. I'm hosting a celebrity dinner and auction to raise money and awareness for our cause, and I would be delighted if you could attend. Of course I'll attend. Not many people get the chance to delight Sting, do they? I'm sure it will be a fun evening, giving you the chance to mingle with the stars while at the same time supporting the vital work of the Institute. Yours, Sting. A huge honour. I'm... I... That's one of the perks of fame. You know, I, I suppose all the other stuff, the press intrusion, the paparazzi being under the microscope 24-7, you know, it's worth it when, when you get something like that. You know, someone that you admire says, yes, I'm also a huge fan of your work and, and invites you to dinner. It's £300 a ticket. £300? Yeah. What an honour, though. Huge honour. You know, and uh, if Sting personally invites you to dinner, who cares what it costs? Well, I don't think he's invited you personally. It's just a standard letter, isn't it? <laughs> right, let me see. Look, that, I mean, that's his signature there, isn't it? He's, he signed it. And, and look, there's my name written in amongst the typing. And, 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 and £300. I mean, you'd expect to pay that in a top restaurant, wouldn't you? So, I wouldn't pay £300 in a restaurant. I wouldn't let you in a restaurant charge you £300. So don't worry about it. There's a cheque. Get that in the post, please. And, um... Frame that. It says you need that to get in. That's what I need to get in. Yeah, hi, Amy. It's, it's Warwick again. Um, I've left a couple of messages now. I don't know whether you're getting them. Uh, I'd really like to talk to you, so, so give us a call back. OK, right. bye. Oh, did I say it was Warwick? You've got to cut back. You can't afford this flat for one thing. It's three grand a month. Yeah, I need somewhere to live. Yeah, um, you, look, you, you've got to downsize. I'm serious. You, you owe the tax man a quarter of a million pounds. <laughs> and what's this? Three hundred pounds. Uh, that's that to get to a charity night. Charity. Yeah, yeah. No, it's important. All that stuff. You know, it's it's good for networking. There'll be film people there, TV people. You know. Raise the old profile, and if I get a job off the back of it, a good film role or something, then we're home free. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're still smiling. You've got a smile, really, haven't you? Didn't you hang yourself? <laughs> and you wouldn't have all these debts. Mm. Yeah. Would you be better off dead, financially? Yes. Don't listen to me, though. I got you into this mess. But, uh... <laughs> It'd be difficult for you to hang yourself, wouldn't it? Because you can reach the rafters to... Hang a rope up, so... What thing to say, isn't it? What's a bit of a no-no, isn't it? Definitely, You put your head in the oven. What? You could get in the oven, put a gas on, close the door, nice and cosy. You could do pills. Although they have those little childproof lids, don't they? Take it off for you, at least I can do. Well, I'll probably balls out, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh, dear. I'm useless, aren't I? Aren't I? Yep. <laughs> I'm the one who should kill myself, really. I'll tell you what, let us know when you gas yourself and I'll come round and I'll get in there with you. Eh? Oh. Mm. <laughs> I'm actually getting genuinely depressed now. Oh. I'm going to be like this for a couple of days, I think. Oh, I hope I'm not like this when we go to the divorce court, because I'll probably just go, I'll give it the lot. I don't give a shit. Good. Thanks for this little pep talk. I see your invitation, please, sir. Oh, it's Warwick Davis. No, I need to see your letter of invitation. It's Warwick Davis, actor. Can you just check your list, please? Jill, is there a Warwick Davis on the list? Uh, where's your invitation? I haven't got it. Um, staff have lost it. You need it. I haven't got it. Um, but I have paid £300, so do you have a record of that? Yes, there's a Warwick Davis on the list, Good. but how do we know that's you? Look at my face. What about it? I'm a famous actor. I don't know you from Adam. Do you have ID? No, I don't have ID. I didn't know I needed ID. Well, it says on the invite you need ID. Well, I haven't got the invite, have I? Put Warwick Davis into Google. What's the first website that comes up? 
Warwick Davis worries you now. I'm not that one, it's just some plats. Look at the internet movie database. I met Warwick Davis and he's a total bella. Don't come into the forums, we're in the forums. I think it's him. I mean, look at these comments, who pretend to be him. Look at that one. Jesus. I can see what they mean, though. Yeah, it's the head. Oh, let him in. What's the worst you can do? Thank you. Sophie Ellis Bexter. Hi, guys. Hi. Sophie, come over here, please. Over here, Sophie. Got some lovely things. Thank you. Can I take care of you? Warwick Davis. Good enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me on the way out. It'd be worse for wear then. I know you probably do loads for charity already. Well, yeah, hell of a lot. But I don't want to miss this opportunity of asking someone like you, with your showbiz millions, for another favour. Yeah? Yes. What are the chances of me getting you to sponsor a child in India? Yeah, yeah not a problem. This is, uh, this is Kalindi. Great. Yeah, no, what, what's the usual donation? Oh, uh, five pounds a month. Five pounds, yeah, sure. But in your case, I would think with your money, it would be more appropriate to... 30 pounds a month? 30 pounds? Or at 30 quid, we spend that a day on pedicures, though. Definitely. Yeah. Well, sometimes when we earn big money, we have to give a little bit. Not a lot, though. Let's be honest. 30 quid a month. Then. Just fill that in here, do I? Oh, yes, yes. Mm. Excuse me. How long would you sponsor a child like this for, would you say? Uh, usually until uh, 18. 18? Mm -hmm. How old is she now? Um, she's seven. Seven? Wow. A lot of them don't even live to the 18th of this. That is the tragedy. Mm. That's, that's it. So she might not last till she's, I don't know, 12? Well, with your help, she will. Will she? Mm -hmm. Good. That's good, isn't it? Mm. What are the big killers out there? Then? What's um, dysentery? Dysentery. So, you know, oof, she could get dysentery any time, and, and that's. Well, and again, not with your money. Really? Because we can supply her with clean water. Good. So she's not going to die, which is, uh, which is obviously good news for her. And um, yeah, I'm going to end up giving some kid I've never even met 30 quid a month till she's 18. So it's four grand down plus the 300 quid I spent on a bit of beef. It's another good day for me. Uh, well, where do I sign, Stingbo? Just there. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Welcome for some charity auction, which basically means that anything you bid for, you'll pay about five times as much as it's worth. That's <laughs> what that means. Right, let's get on with it. OK, this is a big, slimy, purple thing. Is it Charlie Sheen's liver? <laughs> Start the bidding up. One hundred pounds. One hundred pounds. Thank you. Another two hundred. Thank you. It looked good on you. <laughs> Five hundred. Six hundred. Seven hundred. Yes, a thousand pounds for Lady the Bat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next up is a nice one. Eleven thousand pounds. Thank you, sir. This is the uh, 
the last lot. Um, this is a meal for 10 people at a top Michelin starred restaurant in Mayfair. Ooh. Yes, okay. So, anyone who has a bid yet? Uh, this little fella hasn't bid yet. What's your name? Warwick Davis, we met earlier. Right, Warwick hasn't bid yet. Huh? Sting, grassing me up. You're not actually in the police, you know. Start of 500, Warwick? Really? Well, 50 quid surely to start with, you know, work our way up. 500. 1,000. Oh, well done, very generous. That's, that's terrific. 1,500, Warwick? But you, you said bid, you didn't say how to win. Are you in? He's in. Sting, getting involved again? 2,000. 2,000, thank you. 3,000. We're going out with 500 a minute ago, now it's thousands. Can we have some consistency, please? 4,000, Sophie? No, sorry, I'm out. What, what do you mean you're out? Come on, let her have it. Look, look how lovely and thin she is. You know, she could do with a meal more than me. It's on Warwick at 3,000. Going, going. Just like my money. Gone. <laughs> Good. Wife's getting me out. Sophie Ellis Bexter stitched me right up, and uh, little Kalindi's loaded now. Is it some skinny bird bleeding me dry? Hello. Oh, hello. I'm Warwick. Uh, nice to meet you, Warwick. You as well, Congratulations uh, on your, <laughs> your winning bid. Just wondering. If Perhaps you wanted to join me for, for the dinner, you know. You see, that's really sweet of you. <laughs> Ten places and everything, so... Uh... You know what, I really appreciate... Yes, I'd love to. That's oh, that's lovely. terrific. Excellent. Can I bring my um... husband, would that be OK? And it's, uh, it'll be two of you. Yes. Because uh, it's all broken down, it's 300 per ticket, so, so that'll be 600. And that's a cost, you know, I'm not making anything, so... Sorry, you're, you're charging me. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's just a... But you know what, those. take oh, people that you really, really want to be there. Your mum, she was my favourite Blue Peter presenter. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Michelin style restaurants, 300 pounds. What, you're selling them? <laughs> 300 pounds each. I'm not making anything on that, it's just purely cost price to both of you. I'd love to have you there. Well, it's not offloading, it's really just sort of sharing the generosity. 300 pounds per seat. Right, can I have a word with you? Of course you can, Steve, yeah. Uh, look, I don't know how to broach this, but I've been told you've been bothering people for money. I've been bothering people. I've just been collecting money for charity. Your chance. No, so. as I understand, you've been asking people to donate to you. Same thing, really. I mean, still money going to charity. Well, grateful for your generous contribution, but now you're asking for money for yourself. I'm just trying to recoup my losses, that's all. Don't think it's appropriate to go around scrounging money. You're the one going around scrounging of anyone is. I myself spunked 300 quid to get in here, three grand on a meal I don't even want, and four grand to some kid in India so she can live better than me. I mean, it's madness. I'm sorry you feel that way, but you cannot go around scrounging. Oh, take your loot in your stupid made-up name and fuck off back to Newcastle, you coconut-headed git. flat for various reasons. Um, you can't afford it, can you? Can't afford it because of you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, though, I've got a prime location here, so I thought I'm going to use it and uh, pop the bed in over there. That is pathetic. You're pathetic. Just... What are you doing? Nothing. You can't move in here. Why not? Because I'm the landlord and I say so. It's my office. It's a place of business, not a squat. Well, I can never sleep here. No. What if I was working late and I felt tired and I just went over to my bed? Not allowed. What if I was working late and I fell asleep at my desk but I climbed on it first? No, there's no sleep in here. You have to get this stuff out. Brilliant. Okay, what saves me unpacking, doesn't it? Now officially homeless. Cheers, mate. What are you looking at? We can tear our mum's house if you like. It was a time about a week ago, and I, I just sneered at that, but, yeah. I'll take you up on that offer, thanks. Okay. That's an idiot. Excuse me. Oh, fuck's 
Called a few times. Probably didn't get a message. No, I did. You want to call back? No. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. But I feel like it will happen again, Warwick. It won't, I promise. Yeah. I have to go. Please call me. Maybe. Please call. fortunes are turning. Uh, you explain it was your... Yeah, yeah, well, I, you know, I felt I wasn't really pulling my weight. So, uh, I've been burning the midnight oil and uh, went through my old law textbooks. Yeah, he studied one term of law school. Yeah, I did, still got the books. That one hadn't even been opened. <laughs> but, uh, I read through them and I found something. A juicy little detail. Yeah, juicy little detail in this one. The Law Society Guide to the Professional Conduct of solicitors. Principle 15.5. A solicitor who becomes involved in a sexual relationship with a client should consider whether this might place his interests in conflict with those of the client or might otherwise impair the solicitor's ability to act in the best interests of the client. Yeah, what we're talking about here, people, right, is a major conflict of interest, OK? Ian Wald is sleeping with my wife and acting as a solicitor. It's not on. Oh. So, uh, in about an hour, right, we've got another meeting and we're supposed to be signing the divorce settlement. I'm going to go in there, I'll, I'll take a look at it and I'll say, um, sign here, do I? Oh, lovely pen. Shame it ain't going to be used today because I'm dragging you in front of the Solicitor's Complaints Bureau and you're getting disbarred for unethical behaviour. Someone just messed with the wrong midget. Correct. Dwarf, you can't say midget. Why not? I don't know. Yes, that's, uh, that's fine. Hmm. Everything seems to be in order as we discuss. Yes. But, uh, do you have a pen? Thank you. Nice pen. It is a nice pen. It's a lovely pen. It's just a shame it ain't going to be used today. Do you hear that? It's the sound of justice slicing through bullshit. So I put it to you that your relationship with your client is not purely professional, but has become one of a romantic and sexual nature. Warwick, what is this actually? Objection! Got? Overruled! Don't overrule me. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's an knee-jerk reaction. If I hear objection, I say overruled. I didn't even get that from law school. I got it off the telly. So I ask you again. Would you characterise your relationship with your client as being one of a sexual nature? Yes, but it's not relevant. It's not relevant. May I refer you to Exhibit A? Where's the post-it? Oh, uh, sorry, there's some chewing gum I had to get rid of. So, uh, I can see where you're looking. How? All the greasy bum marks. <laughs> yeah, from my fish and chips. <laughs> He's like Sherlock Holmes. Right, uh, sir, you are aware of the Law Society's Guide to the Professional Conduct of Solicitors? Yes. And, uh, a solicitor who becomes involved in a sexual relationship with a client should consider whether this might place his interests in conflict with those of his client or might otherwise impair the solicitor's ability to act in the best interests of his client. Case closed. How do you plead? Warwick, my client isn't you, it's Sue. So there's only a conflict of interest if she says there is. Do you feel there's a conflict of interest? No. No, so this is irrelevant. <laughs> of course. She's his client, you're mine. Yeah, that makes sense. My bad. Oh, well, it's worth a try. No skin off my nose. <laughs> 
Do you have another one of these to sign? Because I wrote this one up. She bought my half, it's all gone straight to the tax man to pay that off. So financially, I'm at naught. No money, no house, no work to speak of. Not bad for 41 years on this earth, is it? <laughs> Why is that funny? You're so serious. I just lost everything. <laughs> spare room. We dump all of our junk in here. There's no bed. No, I know. No room. Too much junk. see famous people interviewed and they get asked any regrets and they say no no regrets I do it all again exactly the same well I wouldn't I'll change a lot I wouldn't have the phone stop ringing after the big films dried up for a start I love acting I wouldn't have my marriage fail I regret that it hasn't been easy being three foot six if I'm honest I've had to fight every step of the way but my biggest regret at the moment is surely that I'm living in a drawer. I could never have predicted that. It's Amy. Hello? No. You don't need to be sorry. It's me you should be saying sorry. It's good to hear from you. No, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm staying at Cheryl's at the moment. You know, my assistant, yeah. No, she's let me use the spare room. That's no, fine, it's cool to talk. Yes, how are you doing? 